Today's episode has been living in my head rent-free for quite a while now. Actually, I have another episode that I recorded way back when, before I got clear about my focus for this podcast that was devoted to the topic of meditation. But today it's going to be a little different, and I have um, some different insights and a different focus because I have been meditating for a lot longer than I had been at that point, and things have progressed in a wonderful way, and I'm going to share that with you along with some insight into what meditation really is and how it can benefit you. So welcome to the episode on meditation. I'm Dr. Williams, and this is my podcast. I have two graduate degrees in psychology, am a licensed mental health counselor, and an expert in the area of spirituality. I am devoted to living my best life and am sharing it with all of you. I'm bringing my expertise, education, and life experiences to you through this podcast. Everyone deserves to enjoy life, and that is what I'm here to talk about. Depression, anxiety, grief, you name it, we all go through it at one time or another. I believe there's a better way to come at these things than mainstream mental health care offers, and I'm here to offer you my perspective and dig into discovering how you can feel good no matter what life throws at you. It is my intention to contribute goodness to this world, and the content herein is how I do that. But one disclaimer before we dive in, should you decide to apply the information offered here, be prepared for improvements in your life. You may even live happily ever after, and you'll only have yourself to thank. This is Feel Good Now, the Dr. Williams Podcast. First, I want to discuss defining meditation. What kind of ideas does it bring up for you when you think about meditation? I know some people kind of picture someone sitting down with their legs crossed and their hands maybe forming a an O shape, like an okay kind of shape. Maybe you think about making the noise, um, or something like that. Well, all of that stuff may be true, but until you are actually meditating yourself, it's one of those things that you can't fully understand. I'm just saying that because that's been my experience, because I always kind of thought it was kind of woo-woo, And that was before I realized that I'm kind of woo-woo, but it wasn't something that I was doing. And I thought it was reserved for really granola people or yogis, people that are into yoga and things like that. But I think that meditation truly is for everybody, literally everybody. And that's what I want to talk about because this is the one thing that I can guarantee will improve your life. And all you have to do is do it. But maybe we should talk a little bit about what it is before we get into why you should do it. When I looked up the definition for meditation, I was really disappointed at what the internet offered. I went on to DuckDuckGo, because I'm not a Googler, and I put in meditation definition. And you know the box that comes up, it kind of just offers you the definition in like this box, and it's not an actual website you have to go to? Well, the first definition was the act or process of meditating. Okay, that is like so not helpful at all in understanding what it is. Like, isn't that annoying? It's definitely a pet peeve of mine when you want to define something and you look it up. And the definition of the word you're trying to understand is using the word you're trying to understand. Like, well, that doesn't make any sense to me because I'm trying to find out what that word means. So you can't use that word to explain it. Anyway, the second definition offered is, quote, a devotional exercise of or leading to contemplation, unquote. I disagree with that because my understanding of meditation is not that the purpose is to contemplate something. Uh, Actually, the third definition that was offered is along those lines also, and it states, quote, a contemplative discourse 
usually on a religious or philosophical subject, unquote. No, that, that is not an accurate description of what meditation really is. So then I did find a definition that I liked a lot better, and it was on Wikipedia. And I know Wikipedia, not really a reliable source, but this definition explains meditation in a more accurate way, in my opinion. So I'm going to share it with you. Quote, meditation is a practice in which an individual uses a technique such as mindfulness or focusing the mind on a particular object, thought, or activity to train attention and awareness and achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state. Meditation is practiced in numerous religious traditions. Unquote. The thing that I really like about that definition is the part that states that the goal is to achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state. That is my understanding of meditation. It is more robust than that because I understand from a spiritual perspective what is actually happening. But ultimately, the goal of meditation is to achieve a clear mind. So it is to purposely stop thinking your thoughts. Now, that is not to say that you will not receive thoughts while you're meditating, but there's a difference in that. And I believe I've mentioned that in a previous episode, that there's a difference between thinking a thought and receiving a thought. So the difference being that when you think a thought, that's your human consciousness focusing on things in your life that you are thinking about. But receiving a thought is when your inner being is communicating with you. Those thoughts, you know the difference because those are your wonderful grand ideas, right? You're like, oh, this just occurred to me and this is brilliant. Like maybe you thought of an invention or something. And when it happens, it feels really good. And you know, wow, that's a cool thought. That's usually when you are receiving a thought from your inner being. And that has to do with information that's in your vortex leading you towards something that you want. You also might be aware of receiving a thought when you feel an impulse to go do something and it's something strong, like you, you have a strong impulse to act on something. That is inspiration. So inspiration always comes from your inner being. But the idea behind meditation is to stop those thoughts that you're thinking all day long that you're rarely aware of because you're always thinking about something so that you can clear the resistance that's in your way. So I'm going to explain that a little bit more. This is where the benefits come in. The greatest benefit of meditation is that you find better alignment with the things that you want in your life. A little bit of background on that. Your inner being is 100% focused on you and what you want. As you define your desires in your life, your inner being receives them and grants them. The way that you manifest it is by allowing. So you have to get into the receiving mode to where you are in alignment with your inner being, you're feeling good, and now these things start coming into your reality as manifestations. So how does this work with meditation? Well, since your inner being is always at work for you, giving you those things you want, you want to offer your inner being the lead. The momentum that your inner being is building is there. So you have a lot of momentum that is going towards these things you want because your inner being is fully focused on that. The problem comes in that you may have a lot of momentum going against you because of your human conscious thoughts that are opposing that which you want. Those things are called resistance. When you meditate and you quiet your mind and you stop those thoughts, you also stop the resistance. And that allows your inner being to take the lead and start gaining even more momentum 
in manifesting those things in your life that you really want. I'm going to use another car analogy. Your inner being is usually the passenger because your human consciousness is driving. But when you meditate and you stop those thoughts that are normally the driving force, your inner being hops into the driver's seat. You stop your thoughts in meditation and that opens up the starting gates. So now your inner being has the green light. Go, go, go. Because the thoughts that you're normally thinking, which are in resistance to you getting what you want, have ceased. You've taken them off the road. All the rocks and the logs and the puddles and all those things that are normally on the road put there by your thoughts of resistance to what you really want are now gone. And now the road is clear and your inner being can just go with it. Your inner being never rests, but you have to. You have to allow your mind to rest in order for you to lower the resistance that's in your way. Now, that's not to say that all of your thoughts that you're thinking are opposing what you want. Because if you are making an effort to feel good, in every moment that you're aware of how you're feeling, so feeling good now, then that is connected with your thoughts. If you're feeling good, then your thoughts are aligned with that because your emotions and your thoughts are always tied together. That's how you know what's going on based on how you feel. So if you're feeling good, maybe you're thinking thoughts of appreciation or focusing on something that's positive then you're golden. You're good to go because now you are aligned with your inner being who is already building and achieving momentum on the things that you want. So now your thoughts and your feelings are aligned with that. That is when you start seeing the things manifesting in your reality. And it can happen very quickly. But a lot of times the humanness of our thoughts is negative and and putting us out of alignment with our true selves. Those are the thoughts that we want to decrease and stop for at least a short time to allow that other momentum to be more dominant. And that brings me to something that I've talked about before that has been kind of weighing on me a little bit. I feel like I need to offer a little bit more clarity, and it ties in really well with this topic of meditation. In a previous episode, it might have been the episode on depression, and maybe another one. I talked about the importance of positive thought and how we have to really appreciate the things that are going on in our lives in order to put us in the receiving mode and to feel good in the moment. If you are in a state of appreciation, it doesn't get any better than that. That is the sweet spot. If you are happy and you're feeling good, and you are appreciating all of the things in your reality currently, that's it right there. Ooh, that's the good stuff. But sometimes that's not possible. And I kind of touched on this when I, when I mentioned, you know, if you notice you're feeling bad, then go ahead and pop back over to feeling good. And I talked about it a little in that episode, how I don't want to downplay the severity of negative emotions. That's very real. And it can be very, very challenging in people's lives when you're in that state, when you're in a negative condition, right? And you're living that. And you really can't think any positive thoughts because your conditions are so low that you cannot get to happy or appreciation from where you are. Abraham refers to that as You can't get there from here. And what that means is you can't get what you want from the state that you're in. So if you are on that lower end of the emotional guidance scale, or what I've referred to as the emotional regulation scale, then you have to work your way up the scale. You can't just jump from depression up to happy. I wanted to offer that clarity because I I understand it doesn't always work that way. You can't just pop over to happy if you're in that very, very lowly state, unless you've already determined something that works well for you. 
And that can move you up the emotional guidance scale very, very quickly. Once you've determined how you can improve your mood, even when you're experiencing negative emotions, that comes with practice and knowing yourself and knowing how to get up to that higher place. But people that are experiencing severe depression or anxiety, um, heart-wrenching grief, uh, homelessness or drug addiction, violence, poverty, sickness. I mean, it can go on and on and on, right? There's a lot of negative conditions that are extremely overwhelming. It might not be possible for you to even conjure up one single positive thought. I'm going to go back to my example of depression. I talked about this in the episode on depression, how if you are so depressed, you can't even get out of bed. You could lay there and try to appreciate the feeling of your bed, you know, the softness or the warmth or just trying to appreciate anything about your moment of now in order to try to conjure up some positive feelings. But that might not be possible. Maybe it's too much effort and you're too tired or you're too sad or you're too anxious and you just can't get there. Or maybe you don't have a home and you are freezing in your tent and you're living outside and you have no food in your belly or whatever it might be that puts you in this overwhelming state of negativity and you can't see one positive thing. Well... That's where meditation comes in. Because even if you can't conjure up a positive thought, you can focus on something that allows you no thought at all. That is possible. Naps also fall into this category. Now, naps are not quite as good as meditation, but they are good in stopping the negative momentum that you have going presently. I love naps. Naps help me so much. And for years, I have been referring to them as reboots. I'll just tell my husband, I got to go lay down and take a little nap. I just, I need to reboot. And that's what it is from a spiritual perspective. Because when you take a nap, when you sleep, you stop all momentum that you have going in your waking life. Now, when you wake up, this is a good opportunity for you to re-gear yourself with your focus because you can pick up right where you left off before the nap. That momentum is just halted, but it's still there. So if you wake up and you instantly start thinking about that stuff again, you're right back on that track. But if you use your nap in a productive way to stop the momentum and then tell yourself that when you wake up, you're going to focus on something positive or you're going to say some positive affirmations or you're going to try to feel better in some way, then you have the ability to turn it around. And that's how a bad day can turn back into a good day. So naps are really important too, unless they're long naps. Say you're like depressed and you're just sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. That's not really helpful. It would be more helpful to meditate. Actually, Meditation is always more helpful than a nap, but sometimes you just can't. You have too much momentum going in negativity that even if you were to meditate, you wouldn't be able to shut off your thoughts. So it would be more productive at that point to nap and then meditate. That might be good. So appreciation, always the best. If you can't establish a state of appreciation, then meditation really, really good. If you can't even stop the negative thoughts to meditate, take a nap, then meditate, and then maybe try to sit down and write some things that you appreciate to turn things around. This does take effort, you guys. Like I'm not, I want to be honest with you. You do have to put the work in to get the benefit. But what you'll see, at least what this is what has happened for me, is when you start doing it, you start to notice the improvement and then you want to do it. So you might have to make yourself do it at first, but then it's going to build and it's going to create its own persona. It's going to become its own thing 
and then you're going to want to do it because it feels good. Meditation is something you have to practice and it's progressive. So it's going to get better as you go. It is week three of the Dr. Williams podcast, $500 contest giveaway. You may notice that I did not mention Apple Podcasts in that title. It came to my attention that many of you were under the impression that you had to do something on Apple Podcasts specifically in order to enter into the giveaway. And that's just not true. You can enter the giveaway no matter which podcast platform you're listening on, as long as you know what the secret code word is, that's all you need to submit your entry form at www.drwilliamspodcast.com forward slash contest. That's really all you need. The reason that I was focusing on Apple Podcasts specifically is because I am trying to get featured on New and Noteworthy, and that just helps me If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you are following the show and writing a review for me, but it's definitely not a requirement. It's just a suggestion if you want to help me to get featured. But in order to enter into the giveaway, all you need is the code word. It doesn't matter where you listened to the podcast and got the information. You just go to the website, put in the secret code word along with your name your email address, and your city and state, and then you are in the giveaway. And that's all it takes. And it really only takes entering one time for me to draw your name. But I am keeping track of those of you who are entering every week, and your name just goes in that many more times. So a better chance that I will draw your name with the more entries that you put in. And now I will give you the code word for this week. The word is FOCUS. F-O-C-U-S, focus. This is actually the last full week in the giveaway because when I release next week's episode on Wednesday, that's the day before Thanksgiving. So you'll only have that day to get in that one last entry before I do the drawing the following day. And if you're following me on social media, then you may have already read that I've changed how I'm going to do the drawing a little bit, just based on some awareness that I received about people wanting a little bit more privacy as far as entering into the giveaway. So instead of doing a live drawing, I'm just going to do the drawing, and then I'm going to reach out to those people who win. And if they're okay with me sharing that they won, I will. Otherwise, they'll remain anonymous. That way you can feel comfortable that your privacy is protected if you don't want everybody to know that you are a winner in the giveaway. It's really up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get back to the episode now. I look forward to receiving all of your entries. I actually don't remember exactly what inspired me to meditate the first time. I know that I was exposed to several different sources that were suggesting it as a practice that at some point I was just like, I probably should try this. I know Abraham talks about meditation a lot. Uh, Deepak Chopra, I think I was listening to some of him and he was talking about meditation. There might have been another source in there as well. But anyway, when I finally decided to do it, It was a little awkward because it was new and I remember sitting in the chair and just trying to focus on my breathing and I just kept trying to bring my focus back to my breath every time that I noticed I was having a thought or I would try to imagine my thought going into a bubble and floating away because I had heard somewhere that that helps when you meditate but actually that doesn't help me. And then I only did it for like 10 or 15 minutes. Abraham suggests 15 to 20 minutes a day. There was a time where I was going 30 minutes and it was just happening on its own in that way. Because what ended up happening was about my third time meditating, I had moved from the chair down to the floor and I was, what was I focused on? Abraham says to pick a sound, a sound that's somewhat boring, like a fan or the sound of an air conditioner. And when I had started meditating, we were still using our pellet stove. 
And I think I had that on. So I was just focused on the sound of the fan. And as I was sitting there focusing on that and bringing my focus back to that every time that I noticed I was having a thought, my body started to move. I didn't understand what was happening. This is not something that I was aware of at that time that it happens. It was just something that happened to me. And my body started moving in gentle circles and kind of swaying back and forth. And it was, it wasn't scary. It was cool. Like it, it was kind of like, wow, something is really happening to me right now. Like it felt like a profound moment of I'm connecting with something outside of my consciousness that is also me. It was proof to me that I have an inner being and I was connecting with my inner being and my inner being was moving my body. I was allowing that because your inner being never overpowers you. You know, you have your your consciousness and your will, right? We have free will. You can choose to pull out of anything at any time. So I could have stopped that meditation. My body would have stopped moving. There's nothing in me, no source outside of me that is moving my body unwillingly. I was willing it to happen. I was allowing it to happen. And then as I listened to Abraham more, I found out that this is something that happens. When you start to feel your body moving, you know you are achieving that state of meditation and your resistance is lowering, your inner being is taking the driver's seat. And it's really, really cool. So then I kind of played with what I listened to a little bit. I used, um, my boys had like this noise machine that had a fan inside this little machine. And I would turn that on at nap times and when they slept, when they were babies. And I still have it. So I've used that to meditate too before. Um, I've also, I use YouTube a lot. And the reason I like YouTube is because I can choose the time of whatever sound I want to listen to, whether it's white noise or brown noise um, or music. I had a 20-minute meditation music that was my go-to for a long time. And then once it's over, the sound stops. So then you know you've reached your 15 or 20 minutes. Sometimes I just want to let it go for as long as it wants to go. So then I will just find a meditation sound or music that will go for like an hour. And then I just let the meditation progress until I feel the energy drop. And that's kind of what it feels like, like it just stops because my body moves every time I meditate now, every single time, ever since it happened the first time. And then there will come a time where I feel like the energy just kind of stops. And that's a natural ending to my meditation. When I first started doing that, just letting it progress as long as it wanted to, it was going for about 30 minutes. And then now I usually do 15 or 20 minutes just as a regular practice. Sometimes if I'm having a hard time with the conditions in my reality and I'm not being a good mom or a good wife and I notice that I'm just kind of on edge, I'll just ask my family if I can have 10, 15, or 20 minutes to myself and I'll go meditate, even if I've already done my meditation for the day, because it just helps me get back into that feeling of center and it puts me in a better place. I feel better. Everyone around me prefers me in that state because I am a better version of me. So recently, I've started listening to a ticking sound. Abraham talks about how Esther likes to listen to the ticking of a clock. And I've tried using a real clock, but I just go to YouTube and look up 20-minute timer with ticking. And it just ticks, tick, 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 you know, for 20 minutes. And then it stops when it's done. At first, I didn't prefer it over music, but then something new happened. And this is what I mean by meditation is progressive because I'm still learning like what is happening with me and it's evolving, 
right? I'm connecting more and more with my inner being the more that I meditate. Today, I listened to the ticking sound before I came in here to record, and I decided to do some deep breathing with it. Normally, I just breathe in a relaxed way, just normal. But I did some deep breathing, and my movement was going. I'm swaying and doing my circular motions. And then on the exhales, I started doing like a sound as I was breathing out. That got a life of its own. So then I had this whole new experience with this meditation that I had today that was fun and interesting and makes me want to do it more. So that's what I mean by even if it's difficult at first, just stick with it and see where it takes you because there are new and surprising and delightful things that are going to come out of this. One more thing I want to say about the movement before I move on. There have been times where my body was moving not in a gentle swaying way, but in a erratic kind of way. Um, my hands would be shaking or my neck, my head does a lot of movement. And sometimes it feels a little aggressive. Now, one thing I do want to say about that is your inner being knows you and your body and what you need. And my inner being has helped me with my neck so much. The right side of my neck is usually very tense and tight. And since I have been meditating and the movements that occur to me, it's released and it's become more flexible. And I just, I'm noticing improvements in my body from these movements that are occurring in my meditation. But it can feel a little violent sometimes. And that was happening to me and it made me do some research. And I discovered what is referred to as kundalini and kriyas. I think I'm saying that right. And those are the movements that happen as you are, they call it awakening. So it is a spiritual awakening that is occurring in your body and through meditation. So if you want to look that up and research on that, I found it really interesting. But you may also not experience movement when you're meditating. There is no right or wrong. I'm just kind of sharing with you what happens for me. Everything can be explained in a vibrational way because we are vibrational beings living in a vibrational universe. So from a vibrational standpoint, what meditation is, is it's allowing you to practice the vibration of allowing rather than the vibration of resistance which is connected with your thoughts. You may have heard me discuss the steps, the steps of law of attraction. The first step is asking, and that happens automatically. You don't have to do anything. Life just happens, and it results in you asking for things you want. Because when you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. So contrast happens in your life, and that sends off a rocket of desire because now you are more aware of what you really do want after experiencing what you don't want. The second step is source answers. So that's your inner being who is completely 100% focused on you and what you want, receives your rocket of desire, and gets to work on it. So now it's yours, because once you ask, your source gives it to you. Step three is where the work is. Step three is allowing. Now, in order for you to allow, you have to be in alignment with source. You have to feel good now as much as you possibly can. And that is what brings the manifestation into reality. You're allowing it to come to you. Meditation is a big part of that because you are practicing the vibration of allowing when you get rid of those resistant thoughts. Step four is just that you get really good at step three. So once you're really good at allowing, you know how to do it, you're practicing it regularly, that puts you in step four. And then step five is you're back in step one again asking, but you're not mad at yourself for it. You're okay with the fact that you're back in step one because you understand how this all works 
And even though now you're back in step one, you're okay with it because you know that that is just part of the process of evolution. So you might be asking yourself, is meditation right for me? And the short answer is yes. Every single person can benefit from meditating. The real question is, are you ready for it? Several different sources brought it to my attention at the same time because I was vibrationally ready for that to manifest in my life. That doesn't mean that it is that way for everybody. Just because I'm saying try it, you might not feel ready. Actually, there's several people in my personal life that I have suggested meditation to, and I don't think any of them have done it. But that's okay, because maybe I'm just one source that's suggesting it. Maybe they will hear it from some other sources, and then they will feel the impulse, the inspiration to try it. Because sometimes I am that step two moment for somebody else. Sometimes source is using me as a conduit for someone else. So for instance, I have um, a couple people I'm very close to who have been talking to me about challenges that they have in their lives. And then when I listen to Abraham, which is every day, A lot of times, the episode I listen to after having that conversation with somebody applies to that conversation. And so then I will forward that episode to that person and I'll say, "Uh, today's episode of Abraham was meant for you because it came through this way of me because I'm the one listening to it. But since I know about this challenge you're having and this episode talks directly about that, I will forward it to them. They are doing their step one of defining what they want. And through me, step two, source is answering by way of inspiration of this is something that might help. And I'm able to to aid with that step two moment of passing on information. So I know that. I know that sometimes I'm being used as a way to pass information on to other people. And that's, you know, that's what this podcast is, right? I'm here offering some information. Does it sound exciting to you to sit down and meditate? Does it resonate with you? Does it feel like something that might offer some benefits in your life? Because if you are feeling that way, then maybe you're ready to do that. Maybe you're already doing it. And I am just reinforcing what you already know. Or maybe you're like, no, this is crazy. I'm just going to move on to another episode because I'm not ready for that yet. That's okay. All of those are okay. You are exactly where you are meant to be at this moment in time. Nothing wrong. Maybe later you will receive a thought about meditation or you will feel an impulse to try it. Your inner being is guiding you. So all you have to do is tune into that. Okay, so let's say you are ready. You want to meditate, and now you want a couple of tips on how to do that. My advice is find a time where you can just focus. You know, when you have kids running around or you're at work or you're driving, definitely don't do it then because it helps to close your eyes. Um, What I mean is just find a time where you can devote 15 or 20 minutes to this. Um, If you feel like that's too much time, maybe start with 10. And Sit in a quiet place, in comfortable clothes, in a comfortable position. I think sitting is better than lying down. I think lying down sometimes prompts sleeping. But you decide. It's really your experience. And then choose a sound to focus on. It could be a sound that is occurring naturally in your environment. Maybe you have the heater on or the air conditioning on and you can focus on that mild sound. Or... You can pick a sound on YouTube on your phone to play, like I mentioned, or you can listen to a clock ticking or the water faucet dripping or whatever it might be. Just something that is steady and just focus on that sound. Your mind will wander. This happens to everybody. When it happens and you're aware that it's happening, bring your attention back to the sound. You might have to do that for all of 14 minutes 
and only achieve your focus on the sound, a clear mind, for one minute of the entire time you're meditating. Or maybe the first couple of times, you just work at bringing your mind back to the sound the entire time. It's okay. Don't get frustrated if it doesn't work for you right away. This takes time. It's a practice. It will progress, I promise. Like I said, by the third time I did this, I noticed a huge difference. My body started moving. Like I was like, wow, there's really something to this. And that is it. That's all you do to meditate. You are just taking the time in your day to stop thinking. Put you in the vibration of allowing all the things that you want that are in your vortex to come into your existence, into your reality. This is good for everybody. And even if you can't achieve thinking positive thoughts, you can meditate. You can stop your thoughts, even for a short time. You will notice improvements in your life. I promise. Even when I am experiencing negative things now, because I am meditating regularly on a daily basis, even when bad things are occurring to me, I get signs. I get signs of alignment. Um, Some of those are like when you see numbers lining up, like maybe you look at the clock at 1111 and there's all ones, or you notice a bird that's noticing you. And these are some ways that I'm reminded of my alignment, even though I am in a moment of contrast and I'm feeling negative, something like that will occur to me that brings my awareness back to my alignment. And I'm so grateful for those times. And it makes me smile and laugh. And I think, okay, that's a step five moment for me because Here I am experiencing the contrast and shooting off a rocket of desire because what I'm experiencing I really don't want. But those reminders, those little signs of alignment remind me that you're only in step one for a moment. It's okay. You're just shooting the rocket of desire. Everything is always working out for me. And that's true for everybody. That concludes this episode, but if you don't want to wait for the next episode to come out, I have more for you at drwilliamspodcast.com. You can learn more about me and my journey to podcasting, find all the ways to connect with me on social media, and there's a button to subscribe so you're the first to know what's new and upcoming. You also can shoot me an email at hello at drwilliamspodcast.com. You are so special to me, and your support does not go unnoticed. I want to support you too. This podcast is my outlet for growth because when you teach something, you hold yourself accountable and apply the information in life. But the inspiration for these episodes comes in a variety of ways. And one of those is through you. I want you to feel like this is your show too. So send me a message and let me know which episode is your favorite and why. And tell me if there's a topic you'd want to hear me talk about. Your feedback applies to so many people, and your suggestion could change someone's life for the better. The best way to do this is by subscribing to the show and leaving a review through your favorite podcast platform. I really listen to you guys, and this dialogue feeds my soul. You say that you're a fan of me, but truth be told, I am a fan of yours. Everything is working out for each of us, and we're all in this together.